Hey guys, Ryan here. Thanks for joining me today. In this video, I want to tell you why I decided to close my Shopify print on demand store. Now, first, a little bit of background. You've heard me say in recent videos that the biggest challenge facing any business, online or brick and mortar, is just visibility. It's traffic. It's getting our products out in front of people. So, my Shopify print on demand store was tied to that website that, if you watch my income reports, I mention it once a month because I show you my Google Ads tra uh, my Google Ads revenue that I generate from people just visiting the website and sometimes they just look at the ad, you get paid for impressions, you get paid for clicks, but this website gets a lot of traffic. It gets between 250,000 to 300,000 plus hits a month. So the traffic's there. I've solved the hard part. One note on traffic though, there's a big difference between what I would consider qualified traffic and just traffic. Now, I'd be lying if I said I was bringing qualified traffic to my website. I was really, you know, it's a content website, so people go there because of the content, you know? People click my website in Google search results because of the content, not because they came to buy something, you know, not because they came to buy a t-shirt from my store. So, that is a very important detail, and I'm just gonna be upfront, like I wasn't making too many sales even with all the traffic, because again, people were coming to just read the content, view the content, view a video. I attached a Shopify print on demand store and kept it running for at least six months. And I did that through the fourth quarter, which by the way, guys, if you're new to print on demand, the fourth quarter, that's where the sales really, they start to just come like crazy. And I got to see what the sales spike would look like or if it would even exist in the fourth quarter. And it really wasn't what I was hoping it would be. So after that, you know, when we brought in the new year in 2020, I made a decision. I closed down my Shopify print on demand store. Now, when I closed it, I didn't just leave a void in my website. I replaced where my Shopify store was with a page dedicated to linking to my various Amazon merch listings that fit the theme of my website. In doing this, I was sending external traffic to Amazon, which they love. And customers also, by the way, they love shopping on Amazon. That's a trusted brand where people don't hesitate to pull out their credit card and check out. The same can't probably be said for my Shopify store, even though my website is really pretty successful, pretty big, pretty well established. You know, it's been around for a decade. In doing that, any sales I generate from external traffic, Amazon loves that. Plus, any sale in general is going to boost the organic rank of that product listing. So, I, in my mind, I stood to benefit more linking to those Amazon listings externally than I did to just make a little bit of additional markup by selling it through my own Shopify store. And I've done this for an FBA brand of products as well, where I deleted my Shopify store for that brand. I know this is, runs contrary to a lot of what, what you'd probably commonly hear, but it's strategic. Again, every sale that comes through Amazon boosts your organic rank. So let me do a quick presentation explaining the three different types of traffic that you're gonna be driving to any e-commerce store, whether it's on Amazon or your own Shopify store. I wanna explain the differences to you guys and why I think it made sense to close my Shopify store and replace it with links to my Amazon store. And the last thing, I'm gonna show you a bonus if you wait till the end of how if you implement a similar solution to mine, how you can make an additional percentage markup on each sale that you send to Amazon. Thanks again for joining me guys. Real quick, let me introduce myself. I'm Ryan Hogue. I've sold over $1.6 million on Amazon to date. If you wanna follow the links in the description, I've got a free print on demand mini course. It's delivered via email over eight days. It'll walk you through how to sell print on demand on Etsy. I've also got a print on demand Facebook community. I'd love to see you there. And I publish income reports on the first or second day of each month. You can follow my success as a print on demand seller, FBA seller, Amazon merch seller, Amazon KDP seller, and I show other ways I generate income online as well. And last but not least, I've got a full print on demand course, over 60 lectures, 10 modules, all laid out sequentially from niche research to design tips to how to get started selling on all the major marketplaces. And to wrap it up, there's a bonus section where I show you how to automate your uploads. And I give you the scripts I use so you have exactly what I have to run your print on demand business. So there's really three ways that a customer makes a purchase on Amazon. And real quick, just so you know, this applies to all the major e-commerce marketplaces across the board. I'm only using Amazon as an example because I closed my Shopify print on demand store and replaced it with links to Amazon. By the way, I chose Amazon if you're wondering because it's the biggest e-commerce marketplace in the world. So easy decision from, from my end. Uh, but there's three ways that customers are gonna make a purchase. It's gonna be via organic traffic, paid traffic or external traffic. And I'm gonna explain all three to you really quickly. Customer journeys that result in a sale via organic traffic 
looks something like this. They go to amazon.com, they perform a keyword search, they click a listing, a non-sponsored listing that is, and they check out, they make a purchase. So they may type in Father's Day t-shirt, like in this example, and I only see one sponsored listing in the search results. That's the first one where it says dad joke loading. The other three are not tagged as sponsored. So those are organically ranking in the top one, two, and three spot on those very valuable keywords, Father's Day shirt. So if a customer purchases any of those three, that would be an organic journey to Amazon that resulted in an organic purchase of your product. The next option is paid traffic. It would look very similar to what I just explained where the customer goes to Amazon, they perform a keyword search, except this time they click a sponsored listing and then they check out. Obviously, if they go the route of clicking the sponsored listing, whoever owns that listing is gonna have to pay Amazon for the click. That's one thing about advertising on Amazon, guys. You pay for the click. So if you advertise on eBay, for instance, you actually only pay when it leads to a sale. And what's cool about eBay is you bid a percentage of the sale price. So you're really protected on eBay as far as advertising goes. I really like how they do it. With Amazon, you pay per click and it's a bidding system. So the people who show up here are the ones who bid the most and are not out of daily budget because you also get to set a daily budget. So if people bid more than you, but they're out of budget, you're then eligible to show up. Now, this is the third one. And this is the example that I'm using on my website, which I mentioned a second ago, Amazon loves. This is driving external traffic. So somebody who wasn't gonna make a purchase on Amazon, all of a sudden is now on Amazon and making a purchase. Jeff Bezos, he's he's extremely rich. I think he's right now the richest man. Yeah, he's gotta be. Amazon stock was above 2,500. It was above 2,600. Uh, he's gotta be worth about 150 billion right now. He wants more money. He's not happy, all right? He needs 250 billion. He needs 350 billion. It's never enough. So when he sees us sending external, tra- I'm making a joke. When he sees us driving external traffic, but seriously, he probably does want more money. External traffic that arrives on Amazon and results in a purchase, they love that, all right? And what they're gonna do, I don't know that they reward you additionally for driving external traffic, but just so you know, as a web developer, like they do have that metric where the inbound journey started on your listing as opposed to starting on Amazon's homepage, keyword search. So they see and they know that, well, they don't, I guess they don't know if it's us that linked, but either way, they love that. I keep saying they love it. They love it. You get the point. Uh, And then every time you get a sale, whether it's through any of the three uh, traffic methods I just mentioned, whether it's through organic, whether it's through paid or whether it's through external, any sale to your listing is going to boost the organic rank. So that's the game we're playing here. If you can drive one sale from your website to an Amazon listing that you own, and then it starts ranking on page one, and then it keeps climbing page one, climbing, climbing until it's at the top, you stand to then benefit from organic placement on the top of the first page on the world's biggest e-commerce website. So that is how you get rich, right? You probably don't get rich. I mean, it's not that you can't get rich through running a Shopify print on demand store. Absolutely. You can. Uh, but I'm, I'm a fan of this. I I believe in Amazon, their organic traffic, and I want to rank my listings as high as I possibly can. So if I can send them people from my personal website to those listings that check out and convert, I'm going to try that all day. Plus, I don't have to pay monthly fees to do that. If you run a Shopify store, not only are you paying monthly fees, you're paying to advertise most likely to bring traffic in. You got to manage your ad spend. You want to make sure you're profitable. And if you really do it the right way, you've got to pay for a bunch of like Shopify add-ons. Most of them are monthly fees. So anyways, this is my approach. Now you know why I'm doing it. And I promised you a bonus, all right? Oh, here's the, another example for external traffic. I forgot to walk you through. So someone might go to Google. They might go to your website, right? Like typically for me, they go to Google, they go to my website, and then they would go to, um, actually, I think I have an example here. This is how I do it in my site, yep. So you might go to Google, then to my site. I have a little shop link. You go to the shop. And I have a bunch of Amazon merch thumbnails from listings that I grabbed out of my account that were relevant to the content on my website. Slap them up here on on my website. I am a web developer, so it's not too hard for me to do. Can do it pretty quickly. And uh, that's it. They click the link. They go to Amazon. Notice the, um, the little banner I put at the top. Free shipping on orders above $25. That's because on Amazon, if someone spends 25 bucks or more, they get free shipping. I could also maybe put a little note underneath that 
free shipping for Amazon Prime members as well on any order because these are Prime eligible as they're sold through Amazon Merch. So why not let your audience know? And as promised, a quick tip for those of you guys that stayed till the end, by the way, I appreciate you. You can go to affiliate-program.amazon.com. I'll put a link in the description. This is known as Amazon Associates. It's their referral program. Anytime you refer traffic to Amazon externally, you can generate links to the products you're linking to through this program, through this portal. So what I do is I go, I grab my uh, Amazon merch listings, I find them in here and I click get link. And then in my website, when I link from the site to Amazon, I use that link because that link will have extra parameters on it that tells Amazon that you're the person that referred them. The cool thing about this is that let's say you referred them and they bought a $15 t-shirt. So you'll get your merch royalty. You'll get a little bit of kickback through here. But here's the thing. If they have like a $500 vacuum cleaner in their, uh, in their cart at the same time and they purchase that at the same time, you'll also get a royalty on the vacuum cleaner. So I've done, I've actually had that happen a couple times and made some nice percentage, uh, profits off of, you know, random things like that, like expensive purchases that were not why I sent them there. So that's a little cool trick that you can do. If you implement my strategy, definitely don't skip this. There's no reason not to. You can already see we're less than halfway into June. I've already driven 15 sales to Amazon via the associates program. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you for staying till the end. You know the drill. Hit that like button. Let YouTube know that this video had some value in it. And if you're not subscribed, all that I ask, hit the big red button. If you want to be alerted the next time I drop a video, just hit the little bell icon that pops up next to it. Thanks, guys. Enjoy your weekend. I'll see you at the next video. Passive Income School is open. Enroll now at ryansmethod.com. Thank you.